Stuart, we're here in Forge Masters in Sheffield. This really is some installation. Yeah, what is it? So this is a five axis VTL that's been supplied by ourselves through our partners, Boss Machine Tools. It's a five meter table VTL, full five axis simultaneous uh, machine. It's a hundred tons of capacity on the table. It's four meters turning height under the cross rail. Uh, six meter Y axis, full hydrostatic machine, uh, 48 kilowatt, B axis mill spindle. 48 kilowatt. 48 kilowatts in the, in the, in the B axis. Uh, 148 kilowatt turning capacity, it's 274 kilowatt motors. Um, like you say, this is a five axis machine. It, it's the largest five axis VTL I've come across. Is, is there any, many bigger? It, it, there's not in the country. It's the largest full five axis simultaneous machine in the country. So if we were to take the, the garden off this machine, what would we see? How, how is this machine built? The machines, are, the, the structural components are, are grey nodular cast iron, they're all double ribbed, there's no welded steel structures, it's full uh, hydrostatic machine on oversized components, uh, the, the ways themselves are 12 inches wide, 3 inches deep. It's, uh, it's really, it's more impressive when it's closed off actually. If you can see the engineering underneath the covers, it's, it's a big advantage for us. It's I, I also note, it's a fast machine. You would think, you know, it's, it's a big heavy machine, but it's a nimble machine as well, isn't it? How does it, how is it so quick? So they've been pushing it, um, so they've been doing performance tests for the last few months and they, they've been pushing it to its limits just now to try and understand what the real, uh, gains they can have in different machining strategies. Uh, recently, they've been machining at five meters per minute uh, with high-speed cutters, and, and it's been performing really well. Um, but uh, opposed to that, they're also roughing five times faster than any other piece of equipment in the in the factory. It's I know you've mentioned previously off camera they actually purchased this machine to do a finishing cycle. Yeah. But what they've quickly established is why not use it for roughing. Yeah, I think that the gains are there to see. It was such a big investment for Forge Masters that um, they wanted to protect that investment by finishing. And, and, and yeah, it's a big machine. It's a powerful machine. It's a really rigid machine. And, and finishing is excellent, but the material removal rates that they're getting for roughing is it, it's just not cost effective not to use that capacity. And in terms of the, obviously we're stood here now that the project's complete. What, what, what is that process? Obviously you've taken an order, great, but where do we go from there? Well, we have a second machine arriving um, and, and another machine shop here, a large boring machine. Um, but on this machine, we, we see it as much as a partnership. We, my company is engaged with Forge Masters constantly. We want to be able to realize the full capacity of this machine. Uh, we are interested in uh, all the productivity gains that Forge Masters can achieve out of the machine. And, and look, at the end of the day, we want them to perform well. We, want, we know the machine can perform well. It's a big step change for this uh, customer. So, you know, we see it as a long-term partnership. We're, we're not going anywhere and we're looking forward to the new machine arriving and it's the same strategy then as well. And if we took this machine away, we are stood on a, on a huge hole, essentially, a huge pit. So uh, somebody said 6,000 tonnes was removed. Yeah, huge. The, the Civil Works was a massive undertaking. Uh, the footprint that we, the area that we had to put the machine in was as big a challenge as anything. It's, uh, we were actually excavating original foundations for the original crane beams going back, I think, you know, 150, 200 years from the building, it's, it was crazy. And so what, what are the extra features on this machine? You know, obviously there's a lot of nice little features in the control. So we, in the control, it's a Siemens 840 DSL control. Um, we've put in some uh, nice uh, um, added features, Industry 4.0 if you like features, um, showing maintenance protocols in real time. So we're measuring uh, uh, temperatures from motors, from ball screws, all over the machine. We're um, monitoring vibration for all over the machine. We have in every single hydrostatic cell throughout the machine, we have an individual pressure switch for each cell. And we monitor these pressures constantly in real time. Um, we also have two other screens that are networked up to their programming department. So they're, they're running with Siemens NX 
uh, camware and it gives them the ability to not only drip feed the programs to the control, but they can also send the model to the control um, and interact with the model in a touchscreen way where they can see the part, they can section the part. So they're never having to leave the machine to then go and ask questions from uh, the programming department. We can isolate that, we can uh, highlight the, any questions and send a digital email to, to the programming department, which is at the other end of the base. Sure. So this head, it's incredible, isn't it? We've actually just seen a, a tool change from the turning head to this five axis head. You know, how heavy is that? So the head itself is about 800 kilos. Um, it's a big head. It's, it's being transmitted from the, the main drive spindle. Um, we have a full 210 degrees uh, uh, movement on the head. It is accurate to 0 0.001 uh, degrees. Um, and I like, that's a, a, B, a, a BT50 with a 60 mil cutter in it. It, it may as well be a twiglet, it, look, it looks tiny. Yeah, the scale does the tool no favours at all, it's, it's huge. So moving forward, you think you're going to put more machines into this fertility? They certainly seem happy. Yeah, I think that we need to realise the full potential of this machine first. Um, it, like I said before, it's a step change for Forge Masters. And, you know, I think it's a big investment for this company. Um, they're certainly trying to do things the right way. Um, we are 100% certain that they'll see the, the gains in, in quick time and, and we hope that more machines will follow. It's, it's a shame this component's on the machine, that the, the, just out of shot unfortunately, some really impressive components we can't, we can't see on camera, but some of the complexity of the, the, the components they're putting in is incredible. Yeah, these, uh, yeah, you're right, it's unfortunate, but they, these are uh, secret parts and we're not allowed to see any of these parts, but they, you, knowing what they're doing and, and how they've come from a strategy doing it before, moving these parts around the whole machine, we, we can do these parts in two setups now. We're roughing through black forged material, taking it all the way down to finish size, two ops, spinning the part round, finishing again inside. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a big difference for them and, and it's going to be a big success for them. Well, the machine's got some really uh, good inbuilt features. So. It's got some um, capability to maintain itself as it goes along, so you're not losing accuracy with time in terms of maintenance, wear and tear. Um, it's got functions for self-calibration and self-measurement. That means that the repeatability of the machining it, it is there and, and less of a worry than it otherwise would be. In terms of cut time, is it more productive? Can you, can you push feed rates? You can push feed rates and one of the great advantages is, is that it's got a driven head. So, the cutting tools are quite complicated tools and you want to use different parts of the cutting head for different types of machining and that's actually usually something that's very difficult to control but with a driven head you can manipulate the cutting tool in order to get the best cutting efficiencies and the best surface finishes and the latest investments of in these machines that these bossed bossed machines it is, is really exciting because these are right at the front of cutting technology what are the machines? So we've got two machines which we've pur purchased. One's a VTL machine, so that's a vertical turning machine with milling capability and a ram borer. And what was the reason for the purchase? Is it purely down to capacity, lead times, maybe quality? Um, well, capacity and quality. So increasingly, the parts that we manufacture are, are incredibly demanding in terms of the accuracies that they uh, require. And the capability that we got before BOST was captured in several machines working in combination in order to be able to find, you know, make the final part. One of the benefits of the new machine is all of that machining is done on one machine. So we, we, if you like, we mitigate the risk of moving from machine to machine. We increase our confidence in the accuracy that we can achieve and we increase, increase efficiency. And is it fair to say you haven't got many subcontractors, so what you make here you've got to complete? That's right. We, I mean, we, we have got a very active supply chain. We wouldn't be able to do what we did without that supply chain. But the parts that we make necessitate a certain level of expertise, which is solely within Forge Masters. And this machine is part of that Forge Masters capability. That, you know, that's something specifically unique to us in terms of what we can offer. The reason that we chose BOST is because the machine is very heavily engineered. It's a really robust machine and we can rely on it to produce the accuracies 
that, that we need for the components that we're making. And I think it's that kind of um, concentration on what underpins good quality and what de-risks manufacture that makes us a preferred supplier.